yeah let's let's go right into slowly we we rot which was yeah. um, the first time a lot of us uh heard obituary certainly the first time i heard obituary and that was yeah i mean that that's like 89 and and you know my my friends and i we were we we're in high school and we were you know our little crew was all we were all diehard um thrash metal people and i remember when some of those early death metal records were coming out like yeah we we as fans we didn't know it was like a different thing right it was kind of like like you know this is a thrash band and then you you right. get the tape and you're like what is that voice <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? You know, and I, I remember having that uh with uh scream bloody gore and uh and certainly was slowly like i remember those first few records where it was just like oh something different's going on awesome you know, yeah. Getting, yeah we had you know we had a lot of slowly we had most of the songs written for slowly before we got kind of approached by the record label and uh so we had to go back into the record you know and back into the studio to do another handful of songs to finish an album actually yeah so and most of that was recorded on eight tracks the first the original more sound yeah that that's the that's wow. going back to what I just brought up with the whole primitive thing. Like a lot of fans, especially young fans that that are getting into obituary or just getting into music, and they just take for granted that you know there's a any a, a endless amount of tracks. When people start talking about they overdub this one and an extra solo here, we put a little thing. It, the the slowly we rot record was on eight tracks, meaning they put six microphones around my drum kit and we got the best sound we possibly could. Once you were happy with the sound, you know, the level of the snare drum compared to the kick drum and the cymbals, that was all bounced to stereo, two stereo channels. Then you just, then you only have six mics to go. You bounce those to yeah. the two guitars down to one track. And then you only, once you do that, those guitars, Alan's volume and Trevor's volume, if you're not happy, too bad. It's, they're set. They're now and bounced. You had, to, you had to play the whole song all the way through without yeah. messing up. And you, there you go. And, and you had to play it perform the entire song without a mistake which is hilarious nowadays to make to 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 say to watch drummers uh have to do that like go ahead just go go do one takes man because yeah. all of us have it you know I, I, it seems like on one every album i have one of those songs where i'm like i think i did it i'm gonna look <laughs> back but i think i got a one take i'm like john i think i got a one take yeah but it doesn't say not every song you know yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I don't know if you guys watched the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction a couple of nights ago, but uh, yeah, there was a part where Dave Stewart said that Annie Lennox, uh, you know, Eurythmics, got inducted. That she did uh, all those old songs. She did those vocals in one take. Awesome! Uh, what? Awesome! <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing because it's like you, you know, <clears throat> if an artist did that now, it would be simply pure de like determination and practicing and <clears throat> trying to do it but it was necessity back then it was exactly. like exactly you're, you're just going to go for it because if not what are you going to do you're going to keep hitting rewind and having to try it again and again we just we practiced our asses off and whatever came out you know at the end of that song you're like i think i did it kind of correct <laughs> good enough move on yeah and and that's a lost <laughs> art cool. too because you used to have to really prepare over prepare where you just got together yeah. and rehearsed 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 and you yeah. Yeah. that record front to back because you were like it's weird we're going to the studio we only have x amount of time and there's all this pressure <clears> to yeah that's you, the you other just, thing. And, you know you can't help but think about the fact that some of those early led zeppelin records and van halen those things would never happen today when you might have five different musicians that live in five different cities or countries mm. and they just send tracks to each other and yep Jump yeah. into Pro Tools modern and, time and come up with a song. You know? Check the drop yeah, box. Those, I just put a couple more riffs in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. There's, you know, something gets lost in the translation. It has to. You know, those being in the same room and feeling what somebody else is doing and yeah. letting those ideas yeah. work together. Can you imagine some of those Zeppelin albums or Rainbow or something with those amazing musicians? Or back to the Southern Rock. Can you imagine an Outlaws session going on with those kind of solos and? just the killer drumming i mean god it must have yeah. just been awesome yeah when you watch uh even seeing videos of stuff where you just don't think about again during that rock hall <laughs> induction they were they uh jimmy iovine uh, got inducted and they were showing this old clip of stevie nicks and tom petty you know doing uh stop dragging my heart around yeah. they're in the studio staring at each other face to face, They're face, yeah, to face, face singing to that face. song and yeah it gives me With goosebumps because you think about like that awesome. would just, it would never happen now you no, know? it wouldn't happen yeah and now just, yeah now, now they just 
like you said, hey, I, here's my voice. Uh-huh. Yeah, sometimes they don't. They yeah. haven't even met each other. You know, what was it like working with here's someone? My oh, I'm looking forward yeah, to exactly. meeting you. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> here's my voice, and I'll meet you next week in person for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll meet you when we do the music video for the song we did together two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, just yeah, it's amazing. And so this was uh, yeah, very much of that time. And um, yeah, there's no like you're saying, there's eight track recordings. There's no like. Uh, you know, could I can I get the hi hat a little louder right there? It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well. yeah, he's like, you could have on Tuesday. And, you know, you know, nowadays <laughs> yeah. we have a we have a full Pro Tools rig in our own studio. We we record ourselves nowadays, uh, and it almost seems impossible to think to do it any other way. Of course, um, but I would never trade the time in those original Morris sounds in those big rooms, all that gear all over the place. Little kids, it was so eye opening for us. Yeah. Uh, and watch those guys, Scott Burns working with tape, slicing tape. And yeah. uh, it was just so cool to, 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 to witness and go through that. I'm so happy I got to to go through that time to, to get us to where we Amazing are Amazing how long yeah. ago that was. And it does not seem like it was 30-something years now. It's right. pretty incredible that it's been three decades, you know. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's crazy when you think about, uh, you know, compare it to film where it's like, You've got Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, Paul Thomas Anderson, like like you can name all the directors who are still shooting film. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. and uh there's just something to me, it's like special effects are great if they're an enhancement, but you gotta have some practical there. And and I think the way, you know, yeah. the way that you've evolved to make records, it's like you have the tools, no pun yeah. intended, but you also have yeah. the the backbone and the meat of of being a real band. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Was it just the history and the learning? The history and the learning is is a big factor. So this is uh, something we got to at least mention. Obviously, we'll, we'll get going through the records quicker because the early the early parts always you know I was the Megadeth behind the music. He's still in Metallica at like the thirty minute mark. <laughs> right, <laughs> like right. Formative stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But the first record being in standard tuning. I mean that that's again yeah. in retrospect it's crazy at the time yeah of course it's insane yep. right <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it's really it funny be? when we had to go back and relearn some of those songs because we really recently did a whole live stream of you know the yes. whole solely ride album and you know a lot of those, some of those songs we've never played before live um so but trevor had to go back and learn some of those rhythms and it was different tuning so it was uh it was funny to watch yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyway that was the standard tuning i mean that right. we didn't know any better that, you know, uh, all the all the albums were that we were listening to. That was the tuning, of course. You know, all the Kill 'Em Alls and Ride of Lightnings. I mean, it's it's what it was. So when it was a drop down, down to whatever it went to D or whatever the hell it was, yeah, uh, that was it, that's when it became new. We we're just like, okay, this is heavy, and I guess we're, I guess we're gonna do this now. But yeah, that was the standard tuning, and it was that way for many many years uh, until until it changed. <clears throat> And this was uh, the last thing I want to talk about on the non-musical side. <laughs> you know, yeah, obviously, you know, Scott Burns, Morris Sound. Um, another name that's associated with a lot of those records is Monty Connor. You know, we're we're talking about Max and Igor a few minutes ago. That, you know, Max still working with Monty Connor <laughs> in twenty twenty two. Poor guy. What? <laughs> 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 um, but just, I mean, at that time, Roadrunner, and this is another thing, because, you know, uh, somebody today thinks about, I mean, not even today, for the last 20 years, right? Roadrunner is, you know, you think about Nickelback and and Slipknot, obviously, and, you know, these uh, massive bands. But not only was Roadrunner not that when you signed, but it was really, I mean, it was barely even an American label at that time, right? Yeah, like, no, it was definitely, you know, we grew up a lot with that record label, and they really turned themselves into a you know major label at the time you know yeah um and of course like everything else you don't have any other experience anywhere else so you don't know how much better it could be somewhere else or how much worse it could be yeah. somewhere. you know it's just like as far as you know right. it's just, on a record label what do we know yeah yeah it's tough and just you know it goes back to how young we were i mean literally in high school when we started doing some of this stuff and it's, you know we had we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. You know, and, and we leaned a lot. We talked a lot with Tom and Jim Morris at the studio. Um, you know, always there to talk to you. 
and talk through record contracts and record mm-hmm. people. Scott Burns was on the phone with them a lot. You know, um, they really helped us out as young kids, not knowing what we were doing. It yeah. was it was pretty cool. So. And who and who are you supposed to go to at that time? Like, it's not, you don't know anything. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, my parents would have known nothing. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's it's probably a blessing that we were such a driven and focused band even at that young age. Because had we not been, you would get the Monty Connors of the world getting on the telephone and trying to tell you something about your song that, A, he has no idea uh, yeah. how to write a song. And B, is, is, what, he tell, is what he's telling us, is that really going to help us? Or is he maybe changing the history of music in a bad way? So it was good that we didn't, there was no telling the obituary what to do, what direction to go with what song or what riff to come mm-hmm. next, or even in the mix, you know. He tried to devil and in, in, uh, in dabble in uh, wanting to give his two cents worth on what the last album sounded like and what you guys make sure you guys are doing what you did on that last album. But again, it just was one ear out the other with us because we were we were, <laughs> yeah. we were even to this day. It's like we, we, we like recording ourselves just because yeah. we know what we want and we just. Yeah, we like doing it ourselves. Yeah, know? it's just that's yeah. what we like. And who, know, who knows your song or what you want production wise more than the band? It might not be. It might not be the perfect decision for other bands, but if the band is saying this is the direction I want it in, then who's to say that's the wrong direction? You know. And I think uh, managers and our, me personally, and this isn't about you know anybody in particular, but I, I think personally that the the real skill there is knowing how to get out of the way. You know, it's like you're right. you're finding the talent, but as far as like developing, developing is a lot of like. You yeah, know. absolutely. Let, yeah, let let the artist develop. Yeah, if you found themselves. a great band, let them be great. That's your yeah. Thing, yeah. You know? And like John said, well, you know, good thing we turned to the Morris brothers and to Scott Burns and to Mark Prater. You know, the engineers and the and the, the guys that were there that were that were professionally uh, there for their ears mm-hmm. and their knowledge. And we leaned yeah. on them a lot. You know, and thank God, Monty and Roadrunner stayed out of the way when it came to the most important part, which was us writing songs, writing those riffs and coming up with the ideas and then getting in the studio and making the sounds that we, that we made on our own. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> like you make a great point about potentially changing the course of music for the worse. Uh, Cause you know, I, I know right. I, I did, uh, I did some liner notes on the uh, uh, a reissue of the first kill switch album on Roadrunner and there and our guy, not Monty and there and our guy's a friend, but, uh, but you know, he was telling the he was telling Jesse, the singer, that his clean vocals he should try to sound like the guy from Creed. <laughs> and you know, they didn't listen to him, but there were a lot of fights at the time. And it's like, yeah. Jesse, which is another band that like started, you know, helped yeah. usher in like a new mini genre within metal, and the records went gold. And but had they listened yeah. to their Roadrunner and our guy, <laughs> right? It, it could have like changed Creed. the history of the, yeah, it could have turned, yeah. you know, changed the mm-hmm. rotation of their earth, you know, that's the same thing with obituary. It's a good thing we, it was a good thing we were so determined and focused on what we wanted because yeah. it didn't matter what people were telling us what was good or really great or not good, you know, we just, we knew what we wanted and maybe, maybe we, maybe we didn't make the greatest decisions with some productions or some songwriting, but it was our, it's how we developed into who we are, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's and to have that um, certainty and that sense of self at a young age, um, and again, where you don't you don't you haven't had time to learn how to doubt yourself, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah, yeah, it's a blessing to have that. It was that that's the school that was schooling us. That was us doing teaching and then learning from what we did right and what we did wrong, and and, and doing your homework on that next album and that next song you write. Yeah, you can learn from your mistakes. 